Hey, how you doing? Hope you're enjoying the book of Proverbs. We are in chapter 15. Uh, we're going to get from chapter 15, verse 30, to chapter 16, verse 2. So, six verses here total. Here we go. A cheerful look brings joy to the heart, and good news gives health to the bones. He who listens to a life-giving rebuke will be at home among the wise. He who ignores discipline despises himself, but whoever heeds correction gains understanding. The fear of the Lord teaches a man wisdom, and humility comes before honor. To, to man belongs the plans of the heart, but from the Lord comes the reply of the tongue. All a man's ways seem innocent to him, but the motives are weighed by the Lord. All right, got some cool stuff here. Verse 30, a cheerful look brings joy to the heart and good news gives health to the bones. You know, we affect other people. You give somebody a smile, it helps them out. You give, you know, bring something good. A cheerful look brings joy to the heart and good news gives health to the bones. Now, don't, don't lie. Tell people what they want to hear because you want to bring health to their bones. That's not what this is saying, but... You know, bring a good word, bring, bring some cheer, bring some encouragement. Even if it's a difficult situation, bring support, you know, uh, be there for people. A cheerful look brings joy to the heart and good news gives health to the bones. We affect other people. Let's affect them in a positive way. You know, 31 and 32, this common, common theme of receiving correction. And if you don't, it's going to be bad. Um, I love verse 32, 31 and 32. He who listens to a life-giving rebuke will be at home among the wise. A life-giving rebuke. You know, not a, not a nasty rebuke, but a life-giving rebuke. That person is going to be home among the wise. I'm not sure if this is in intention in the verse, but give a life-giving rebuke. You know, don't just attack somebody. You know what I mean? Like, tell them something to help them. The person who listens to that is going to be at home among the wise. And then 32, he who ignores discipline despises himself. You may not think you despise yourself when you ignore discipline, but you're wrecking your life. So you despise yourself. Whoever heeds correction gains understanding. Uh, and 33, the fear of the Lord teaches a man wisdom and humility comes before honor. So, Understanding that there's a, a greater thing going on helps us to grab hold of wisdom. And then humility comes before honor. You know, when you're trying to make yourself great, people are going to cut you down. When you're walking in humility, people will lift you up. Humility comes before honor. And then chapter 16, verses 1 and 2, I think they go together. I think I understand verse 1. Verse 2 is a little bit more simple. Verse 1, uh, to man belong the plans of the heart. So you got your ideas, what you should do, what's right, what you want. But from the Lord comes the reply of the tongue. I think what that means, but, but God will tell you if it's right or wrong. If you're doing right or you're doing wrong. God will judge it correctly. I think that's what the second part of verse 1 means. And then verse 2 all a man's ways seem innocent to him, but motives are weighed by the Lord. So I think it's kind of like both of these verses mean the same thing. All a man's ways seem innocent to him. You know, people think they're doing the right thing. People think they are justified in their actions. People always think that. <laughs> but that does not necessarily represent that they are justified in their actions or that they're doing the right thing. All a man's ways seem innocent to him, but motives are weighed by the Lord. But God will see through your personal biases and you will be judged accurately. So just because you can justify something to yourself doesn't mean that you're going to convince anybody else and you're certainly not going to convince God. All a man's ways seem innocent to him, but motives are weighed by the Lord. One of the things I've heard in Christian circles quite a bit is, you know, well, listen to your heart and, and see uh, 
Well, sometimes your heart's going to lie to you. You know, a man's ways seem innocent to him. I've, I've had people say things like that, you know, like, oh, yeah, well, I, I decided to keep these fish out of season. I prayed about it, and God said it was okay. Like, what? Like, poaching is, God's not in favor of poaching. <laughs> You're like, uh, any, any kind of thing like this. Uh, something might seem good to you. You might not have a check in your heart. You might not feel that it's wrong, but that doesn't mean it isn't wrong. All a man's ways seem innocent to him, but motives are weighed by the Lord. So let's pray to see past our biases, to not just trust our feelings, but to really have a deeper discernment of right and wrong in our own behavior. So let's pray along those lines. Heavenly Father, um, we don't want to have our ways seem innocent to us when they're not, uh, but personal bias is a real thing. And so thank you for warning us about that here in Proverbs 16.2. Help us to get past those personal biases and to be able to see our own actions the way that you see them so that we aren't thinking we're innocent, doing the right thing when we're actually doing the wrong thing. So Lord, I pray you'd give us wisdom in this. Help us to weigh things uh, and not just go running off and then try to justify ourselves, but help us to weigh these carefully so that we can see our own actions through your eyes. So, Father, guide us in this. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.